In this video, I will de uh, define to you in which spaces um, we are working here. So, uh, I, I will assume throughout the lectures um, that H and G, yeah, that's it for now, um, will be um, vector spaces. That means um, you provide they provide an operate uh, provide operations plus uh, plus defines if we if we uh, do this for h then plus is an operator which takes two elements of h and uh, gives another element of h and we write this as um, the pair x and y maps to x plus y so we write this as an infix operation and we have a scalar multiplication so we take a real number so we only consider real vector spaces uh, actually if you want and a, a vector and we will get back a vector and uh, we write this usually as uh, lambda x without any dot okay so we have these two operations which give should give meaningful results uh, and usually we will assume that they um, uh, that they have the usual laws which you would expect for vectors like uh, plus is uh, commutative associative and so on uh, I will not go into detail here um, what we'll also what we we'll, what we we'll also will assume is uh, that they have an inner product Uh, so they are inner product spaces and this means that there is a, an operation uh, which I will write like this uh, with uh, angle brackets which takes two vectors and returns a scalar and this means um, usually we write this as well, if we have a pair of vectors, then this will be uh, the inner product between them. Okay, if you come from physics, then you probably know bra uh, the bracket notation, where you have the where you have a vertical line in between. Um, and in physics, sometimes you you also have complex scalars. But here, our inner product is linear. In, in each of the components. So it's linear in both components because, as I said, we have real vector spaces. We don't need to take the complex conjugate here. Okay, and the second thing uh, which we will assume, um, and this pops up sometimes, is uh, that these spaces are finite dimensional. And this means um, that uh, there is a basis that uh, they have a basis, um, a finite basis, um, and you can even uh, assume because we have an inner product that there is a, an orthonormal that there is a finite also orthonormal basis. And you can also assume that the uh, that the ball, uh, if you can write this as so, the the ball around zero or any ball. So uh, if you take x, uh, the set of all x's such that um, the norm of x which is then defined as the, the square root of the inner product of x which, with itself. And this is smaller or less than 1. 
and this is a compact set. And this means that any sequence in this set has a convergent subsequence. So any any sequence in this set has a convergent subsequence. Okay. Um, and this property will be important for, for, for some of the convergence proofs which we have, which we will, which we are going to have. I'm, since this, the target audience is mostly engineering students, I'm not really assuming that, um, uh, that you have a feeling for that, but um, still for the sake of exactness, I will, I will uh, make the, I will assume this. Okay, so we have these uh, properties here. So let's give some uh, some examples. So, so the principal example here will be the set Rn, and this is the set of vectors. And we define if we have two vectors x1 to xn, and we define the sum obviously as the uh, xn. Of, uh, this is the point-wise or component-wise sum. Okay. If uh, the, the multiplica multiplication with the scalar is the multiplication in each component. Okay. And usually we define the inner product uh, when x is the, the uh, x is this vector and y is this vector uh, as the sum of x i y i um, as usual and in fact this is finite dimensional uh, n is um, n n is finite here and this is the dimension of the space okay um, but you can also uh, put other inner products on Rn, usually these, the, the plus and the scalar multiplications are like fixed, but um, an alternative would be to take x and a y with a symmetric and positive definite matrix. And the reason why I don't want to define the, the inner product as this, you can also, by the way, write this as x transpose y, is that in the very, probably very last section, we'll see how we use uh, a different inner product in order to, to somehow more conveniently prove uh, the convergence of an algorithm and therefore I want to keep this here. I, I want to keep this as general as possible and sometimes you actually use this matrix A for for numerical purposes and then this can be called preconditioning and sometimes your problem gets easier if you take a different inner product on your space. Okay, so we have also seen the the space of, of curves and in, in general you can you can take a set uh, yeah for the for the inner product you need more but just let let's take a set here yeah. um, if f is a set uh, s is a set and then um, the the space of uh, the space of fun of of real valued or actually vector val uh, vector space valued functions on this set uh, is also a, a vector space. So the uh, functions um, f from s to r. Um, form a vector space where 
what does this mean? So if you take a function f um, and a function g, then you want to define their sum, and this should be an, uh, another function on s. So we have to define this, uh, we have to define the function at a point x in s, and this should just be defined pointwise. And this is the definition of the, of the sum of two functions, not very surprising. And you can scale a function uh, with this, uh, you, so you can multiply a function with the scalar lambda. And this is also a new function which you can evaluate at a point and the result will be uh, lambda times f applied to x. So actually if you want to set parentheses then the parentheses belong here. Okay, so this is the definition of the, of the product of a function with a scalar and here you have uh, you evaluate at the, uh, this at the point x and as a result you get, you get the evaluation of f at the point and this and the result multiplied with lambda. Okay, um, the problem is it's usually for arbitrary sets s not very easy to define an inner product on this, on this um, if s is infinite. So if f, if s is a measure space And then you can also take Rn, or you can, as we saw, take a, a closed interval. Um, then you can uh, say more. Um, then you can you can take the integral over um, over 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 a function on S. So then the inner product of f and g should be defined as the integral over s f of x g of x and here we take the measure on mu on the space s um, but but uh, then as you see you have to get a real number out of it so you have to restrict um, this to L2 of S, and this will be uh, the set of functions f such that the integral over f of x with itself, so squared, um, d mu of x is finite. You have to assume this, otherwise you don't get uh, real values out of your inner product. Okay, and usually, as I mentioned this for our for our paths in the shortest path path problem, usually these spaces are not finite dimensional. can still do a lot of exciting stuff, stuff on, on these spaces, but uh, this is probably be beyond the scope of this lecture, so I will, I will only, I, I will skip this and uh, if you are interested in the sub subtleties, then you find some literature uh, where these spaces are discussed in more detail.